You play fantasy football, a lot of times when a backup quarterback comes in, who ends up prospering? Running back. The running back does, but also... Yeah, that third team wide receiver. Third team wide receiver, yeah. because that's who they work with every day. Yeah. We talked about Nathan Peterman coming along. Last year, the starter was Eric Wood. Mm -hmm. Tyrod was the starting quarterback. Who worked with the second teamers all last year? Peterman and Groy. Peterman and Groy. You, you don't think that they've had, they've developed communication over a year now to try to you know start this line? And the line itself... Oh. Well, I mean, back up for a second to <clears throat> all the moves and how we got there, right? So at the time of the Cordy Glenn deal, we had Incognito. Nutty Wood. Incognito. Yeah, Wood was already... Wood got... Wood had a problem in his exit physical, so that happened just a couple days after the season. So, you knew what? We lost Wood. There's medication for that nowadays. <laughs>Losing Eric Wood, but you do have Ryan Groy, who plays who played center great when asked. So he did, yes. you, you're not super concerned about that. Okay, all right. So we have we have Cordy Glenn, but I think we can deal him. We have Dawkins, so we'll just find another guard. We've got Miller. We've got some guys we could put at guard. We'll be yeah. fine at guard. We'll find a guard, no problem, right? And then you quickly watch the situation dissolve from Cordy Glenn, Richie Incognito. Ryan Roy, Deion Dawkins, and uh, Mills on the right side. You quickly watch that disintegrate to you deal Cordy Glenn. Then you find out Richie Incognito is crazier than you thought. You lose him. So now you have no, you're, half your line is gone. More than half your line is, is gone at this point. So you're left with Deion Dawkins and Mills. That's what you're left with after last season. And you're moving Dawkins to tackle. Which I, st I still am not a big fan. But anyway, anyway, so all you have, right, that you could lock in is Dawkins is definitely playing left tackle. And after that, literally every position on the line is up for up for competition. Mm -hmm. And they used probably about 15, 16 combinations. Mm -hmm. Oh, they used, they used a ton. Quick question for you. Yep. Had you known that Incognito was jumping on the crazy train, would you have traded Cordy Glenn? Yes. You still would have traded Cordy Glenn? Yes. Because big picture is you're not worried about protecting... Nate Peterman? <laughs> you're taking the long view of this in the fact of they traded him in order to move up, to gain the capital, to get their quarterback that they wanted. Right. And with that capital, they were able to trade a couple other things to get the middle linebacker they wanted. So... Yeah. In the long run, if you're going to trade a left tackle for a quarterback and then a linebacker... You're doing that all day. You're doing that all day. Yeah. Uh, especially a guy who um, has been injured. Was a, you're not bull rushing Cordy Glenn. We've established that. He's a heck of a left tackle. Um, but to trade a two-for-one, you, you got to take that chance. you really got to take that chance. It, it, I mean, for the way that it played out, um, I don't know if the Bills had that kind of foresight to know that that was going to happen during draft or that was what they planned on doing at the draft right. but uh, I think you, you do that all day you need you, the, the biggest the biggest positions you need on this team on any team you got your quarterback your left tackle middle linebacker and a corner yeah. those are the huge you got your Davius White boom you drafted uh, Jermaine Edmonds he seems like he's going to pan out the kids learning every day um, you drafted Deion Dawkins maybe he's just coming along a little bit slower than, than you expected, but then now you have your quarterback. So, essentially, um, all four of those guys are on rookie deals. Mm -hmm. So now you can go next year after all that cap clears. I know I'm getting, I'm getting off subject a little bit. After all that cap clears, you can go out and pick and choose whatever free agents you want to be with this team. Mm -hmm. Now, will the record affect what players might want to come here? The Bills are 3-13. and 13. <laughs> Yeah. yeah. After seven and nine, and they finish middle of the pack again. Who knows? Money takes a little different. But the well, thing money talks, dude. Like money, money oh, talks. Oh, it does. 
The Bills will have plenty of it. Now that they're out of Khalil Mack, they, they still have capital. And with the exception of Edmonds and Allen, they have staggered their most important positions to be signed in different years. Yeah, they're in a good spot so, in that respect. Yeah, they can roll over stuff and, and get even more players in here. The question that I have, if we could bring it back to the line, I like the connection of, of, of Peterman and Groy. The, the year that Wood went out, Groy had 300, or I think around 300 offensive snap, passing snaps, and, and didn't allow one pressure. Yeah, he looked amazing. Yes, looked, and that's he looked why better you, than Eric Wood, honestly. And that's why you second round tendered him over Gillisley that one year. Yep. It was an amazing time. Uh, so now you, you draft Teller because in, Incognito did. He was the conductor on the crazy train. This was not it. Driving down this road was a mistake. We, we had some technical difficulties. That's right, no one needs to see me anyway. Um, Understatement of the year. So, we're talking about the right side of the line. Yeah. Uh, conventionally, you're more run blocking yeah. side. Yeah. You know, all they got to do is be maulers over there. But uh, putting Vlad to cover the backside as a guard. And Dawkins, who <laughs> has looked like a turnstile against speed rushers, is very concerning. But that was kind of the... I mean, I, I... We talked about Dawkins at tackle. And we got... People weren't very happy that we were not speaking well of Deion Dawkins at no. the time. No. But the knock against Dawkins was lateral movement, which is... I don't, I don't know about you. In my opinion, pretty paramount to the tackle position. At the guard position, you cover you cover that up a lot, right? That's why I love Dawkins lateral. as a guard. I love than... Dawkins as a guard. I, I'm not in love with him at a, as a tackle. Uh, he might have the you know he might have the smarts to do it, right? Got to you got to be an intelligent football player to play tackle. Well, here's my here's my question. I'm sorry I cut you off, but I just want to say, is it because pe people are upset because we're not taking uh, Dawkins in a vacuum? You guys, I think. Sometimes, uh, subconsciously, we're comparing him to Glenn. Oh, absolutely. And Glenn, was, compare him Glenn was great. Yeah, you're going to compare him against Glenn, of course. Of course you're going to compare him to Glenn. I mean, when you compare against him against Glenn, Glenn, it's like, okay, he's not at that level yet. The line across the board has some serious communication issues. And oh, yeah. the only person that can fix that is Groy or Peterman. That's it. Mm -hmm. Right? And one of those two has to take a leadership role and fix that problem. What, whatever that problem is, it's got to get fixed because there's clearly communication breakdown. Um, and it just shows you how good Eric Wood really was, right? Because mm -hmm. you look at him, he was a good center. I'm not going to say that he wasn't, that he was a poor center by any stretch. He was a great center. But you look at uh, you look at Wood and then you look at Groy from two years ago and you go, well, Groy's, Groy played great. Why, why aren't we playing Groy more often? Like, why? Is, yeah. should it, shouldn't there be an open competition at this point between Groy and um, and Wood? And uh, clearly the communication that Wood had with his line um, versus what Groy has with his current line is uh, might be one of the reasons. Eric Wood clearly was very good at doing the clerical work of your, of he your was, NFL and, and, and you know It didn't happen overnight for Groy. It wasn't one of those things where he was... You know, they were bringing him along as well. Uh, he had he had the versatility of Wood, if you think about it in that respect, where Wood would play guard, guard for a little bit. Yeah. You know what I mean? So he was able to even communicate stuff to Groy in a, in a better, you know, in an easier fashion. So it, it, it all it all will come down to that line and how they are able to communicate. Groy having familiarity with Peterman after working in practice all last year has to be a plus. Uh, his ability. But you know what? Though it, it, it's not enough just to make the calls that are the correct, the correct protections. If Dukas gets thrown around like a little child again, it's not going to matter. Hey, we got the right protection. Yeah, I'm sorry, my 300-pound guard was in my lap in two and a half seconds. I'm sorry. <laughs> this line terrifies me. It's yeah. it's terrifying. I'm not even playing behind it. It terrifies me. I know, right? Um, Look out, blocks. That's it. Look out. That's it. I, I don't even know if there's anything constructive that I can say about the offensive line because it's been such a disaster. 
with such a disaster. So I don't know if that's position coach. I don't know if that's coordinator. I don't know if that's the change of personnel. I don't know if that's Peterman to Allen. I don't know if that's Groy. I don't, I don't know. If, I don't know what it is. Well, it's under- whatever it is, they need to figure it out. I unfortunately, there's a long list of things that are suspect, and I, I couldn't even tell you which one it is. We already talked about Chrome. We don't need to go over that again. <laughs> No, I mean, I, well, Dable's the setup of his offense aid this line early with the two tight end set. Yes, mm-hmm. it'll definitely do it. Doesn't take care of stuff up the middle, yeah. but it'll take care of stuff on the edges. Okay, that's that's a check. So you're, you're giving your tackles a little bit of help. That's number one. Number two, what is understated a lot in offense is that everyone wants to. Oh, could could the quarterback develop chemistry with the wide receivers? Well, even more than that is the line, the five guys in front of them developing chemistry with themselves. Right. Um, there's certain lines that have been playing together for so long. Uh, Aaron, Rod- Aaron Rodgers and Green Bay is a perfect example. Mm-hmm. That line's been playing together so long, they almost don't need to communicate on certain time when they see certain fronts. Right. They just need to go out there and do it. So you got a lot of new pieces, a lot of moving pieces. That's why the line was being shuffled so much in the preseason. They wanted to see what combination could work. If a guy goes down and this guy comes in, how would it look? Um, if they're taking the long view to this and saying, okay, Teller's going to be our guard next year. Dawkins will have another year under his belt. Groy will have a, a full season. Uh, Miller and Mills, this is the, what their third year playing together, second or third year playing together. Hopefully they develop a chemistry where they're not even talking to communicate. Uh, so if they're taking a long view and saying, hey, listen, we're not telling anybody in the press this or anybody in the fan base, but we don't expect to be really good this year. Yeah. But we're going to grow as a team every day. And hopefully next year when – Allen, if that's their plan, I'm just saying, if when Allen's ready to take the helm, you have a you have a solid five guys that have played 16 games together. So it could be one of those things. I, I don't know. I'm just guessing here. It's uh, I just don't know. 